D Block. D Block's boxing. They won't let me change the motherfucker, yo. Like, I went on there to change my name. They like, you can't change your name. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I dug a hole. I just got to stay in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, I was trying to change it to something positive. I was going to change it to D-Block's Boxing, you know? But this is D-Block's Express. Watch your step on the way in. Roll something. Well, you know, you know what I'm doing. Roll something. Spark something. <laughs> Welcome aboard the, the D Block Express. Hell of a fight last night, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Didn't I tell y'all? I know it's hard to do the live commentary because you got to watch the fight, but then you got to call what's going on in the fight. But then maybe I should start doing them. Fuck it. I'm at every fight, so why not do it? You know? But we knew, we knew Spence was going to show up. Show up and show out, didn't he? Shit. Y'all got LA. If I had to put money on it right now. From what I saw and what I know about Crawford, I will have to take Spence. Now, that's crazy how I said that because I got Crawford right now being pound for pound the best fighter in the world, right? But the question is, why do I have Spence over Crawford? Crawford's a problem. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> what's that saying? Um, you're talking about an unmovable object versus a non a non stopping locomotive. I forgot the fuck they said. That's because I'm trying to get fresh. And I know a lot of y'all don't have these down south, but what y'all want is, y'all want an on. Oh, I can't. I'm about to say, y'all want an entourage, man. The entourage, you could put more in there, but obviously it's going to cost more money. But um, the entourage player. Remember, put on your lotion. Get your spray on. Lotion and spray. Not just spray, motherfucker. You want to get that smell off of you quick? Throw that, throw that lotion on. Bath and Body Works. It will make a difference. I was wondering what was going on in the crowd. You know what I mean? Charlo versus Benavid David Benavidez was cracking off early. <laughs> and I know, I know Canelo just sitting back laughing, like, look at my look at my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my kids fight over daddy. Because <laughs> that's how I saw it. You know what I mean? Both of y'all want the head honcho, but you guys can't even come to an agreement to get to the head honcho. How are you going to badmouth the dude that you need to do business with? That's hard, right? You got to really think about that. That's why a lot of fights don't get made. Eddie Hearn coming over here talking all that shit. And then fights don't get made because he over here talking shit to people he need to do business with. You know what I mean? This should be common sense to some people, bro. Some people don't know. One dude asked me, my man Wildebeest asked me last night, it's in the video. Who will get to 50 and 0 first? Who is more likely to get to 50 and 0? Let's put it like that. Because we're not certain that anybody can do it. Especially if Spence worried about his mouthpiece at the wrong time. Boy, that shit was yeah, I was nerv I was I was a li I was a little nervous, man. But I I expected Ugas to do what he always does, which is not put his foot on the gas, not finish the fight, not go get his check early. I knew he wasn't going to. He caught him with a punch here and there, like Ugas, you so blind. You ain't even noticed your man was fucking hurt. You ain't even noticed Spence was, Spence was hurt. He was caught off guard. He was wobbity wop. You could have really took advantage of that. But the king prevailed, man. I told y'all in the prediction video, I said, I said, Spence does not let up. He is in your face 24 
seven to the point where your man Ugas had to start. I saw him push Spence three times in a row. In a row, homie. This is boxing. Fuck is you pushing me for? <laughs> that shows you how much Spence is in your grill. And I told y'all before, if you guys notice, I think it was, I want to say the, the first or second round maybe. That Spence treats this like a business. It's just business, homie. I have nothing personal against you, Ugas. You know what I mean? I want to see you fight another day. But tonight, tonight is personal. <laughs> Actually, it's just business. <laughs> Yo, I loved it because Spence or Ugas was like trying to get amped. He took, he got a little emotional in there, right? And he, like, bumped into Spence, like, yo, motherfucker. And Spence looked like he forgot that this dude, he trying to hurt somebody. This dude trying to hurt him. There's real beef going on right now. You see what I'm saying? But because of the fact that it's a boxing match, Spence is, I'm just doing my job, homie. It's just business. Don't take it personal, you know? So when he, when, when Ugas bumped into Spence, Spence was like, oh, I didn't even notice you were there. <laughs> like, yo, hold on. You got to fight this man. You got to fight this man for 12 rounds. 12 rounds, you got to fight this dude. I didn't understand that. 12 rounds, you got to fight this dude. And you bump into him and, say, and look at him like... I, I, didn't, I didn't even know you were there, homie. My bad. I'm just trying to go back to my corner. It's my time to go back to the corner. <laughs> yeah. Same thing when his mouthpiece popped out. When his mouthpiece popped out. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> like I said, I was a little nervous. Because of getting tattooed. But I also felt like no matter how much, even if Spence went down and you knock Spence down, which has never happened, I don't think it ever will happen. Even if you knock Spence down, I think he would have got up and prevailed, right? This is what it is. But Spence was so much into the business to say, man, I, I got to go get my mouthpiece. The rules state I need a mouthpiece to box. My mouthpiece is over here. Let me go get my mouthpiece real quick. <laughs> Not realizing the fight just don't stop because your mouthpiece came out. You know, the ref will let it rock for a little bit. And then if, if there's no exchange like he did before, he'll, he'll stop it so that you can go, you know, you can get your mouthpiece. Um, same thing with Mike Tyson. Remember Mike Tyson got knocked down? His mouthpiece flew out. Remember that? I think he spit it out. Whatever. He lost his mouthpiece. The time did not stop for Mike Tyson to look for his mouthpiece. He found it. He went to stand up at 9. Did not make it for 10. All because of that. All because of that mouthpiece. <laughs> That's a powerful ass piece in the sport of boxing. I'll tell you right now. In the sport of boxing, the mouthpiece... Stands its own. Cause shout outs for Ugas for exposing that your boy Spence has a mouthpiece. <laughs> but I called it early. I called it early. I said right away, I said I said that um <laughs> I said, Spence, the uppercut, homie. I know I was talking to the TV, but I, I'm pretty sure he heard me. Because as soon as I said it, the man started throwing uppercuts. Like there was no tomorrow. And connecting all night long. Never stopped after he threw the first one after I told him. Never stopped. Shout out to Derrick James. Woo! You saw Derrick James in the corner? I'm going to upload the video of, um, they got a segment where it's just Derrick James giving Spence, um, giving him instructions one time, and Spence go out there and perform that one time. 
phenomenal, phenomenal, man. That's what you need in boxing. You need your trainer to not just you. Remember in the Ugas in the Ugas corner. Are you tired? Are you okay? Do you want to quit? Like, bro, what the fuck is you doing? Where where's the instructions at? You know what I mean? He said, "Yo, you're throwing that shot, but it's too high. You know, make it shorter." Soon as Spence heard that, boy, them shots were coming in. Chris, man, look. That's an adjustment, you know. Spence right now is a perfect fighter. I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people in boxing don't like one person saying, I'm the best, right? But as you can see the post fight, as you can see all the shit we've been dealing with, Spence is like, listen, bro, I told you what the fuck I was going to do. Regardless of what you were doing on your side of the street, I'm going to go get these other belts, and then I'm going to come over and grab that shit. That's exactly what your man did. You got to remember, why is Spence so big, right? What fight does Spence have that catapulted him to pay-per-view only status, right? Think about it. Think about it. What fight was it? That's a good, I'm just, that's a question. That's a good question. I'm asking, drop it in the comments. What fight does Spence blow up to stardom? Cause to me, it was, it was the Mayweather, the Mayweather sparring that brought Spence on the scene, and has kept him on the scene ever since. Right? Mayweather is the reason why Spence is Spence. Like, oh man, Floyd was getting Floyd was getting upset with sparring partners, and before Spence showed up, people were taking. Floyd was paying people ten thousand dollars a week, a week, ten thousand a week, to spar with him. But you gotta be ready to go. You know, Floyd. Two in the morning, let's go. You know, one o'clock in the evening, let's go. Random times, six in the morning, let's go spar. Random ass fucking times. Random times to go work. Random times to to get it going. You know, just like um, Zab Judah was saying. In the, in the DJ Vlad video about why Floyd Mayweather is the best. You see what I'm saying? He explained his reasoning why. Work ethic. The boy would call me. We'd go to the gym, do an entire workout. He'll lay down for a couple hours, call me again for another workout, and then call me again at something in the morning for a third workout. Are you shitting me? I don't need to explain why, you know, but... You see what I'm saying? As far as Spence, as far as what Floyd has done, and for Spence to stand up to the greatest of all time, the body shots, upstairs, downstairs, the foot movement, the defense, I got to take Spence over Crawford. It's hard to even say that, you know? You got to understand, Crawford is the only man to stop Sean Porter, the mini Mike Tyson. Crawford's the only dude to scare off Pacquiao. Pacquiao wasn't scared of Thurman. You know, Pacquiao was going to fight Spence, but Pacquiao was not going to fight Crawford. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> but... Spence, I think Spence got it, y'all. I think Spence got what it takes to become pound. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? There's nothing wrong with Spence being pound for pound number one. It just shows you the best man won that night. And that's all I care about. That's all that you should care about. I ain't gonna keep this shit long. I just wanna try to touch on who is more likely to get to 50 and 0 if they were to reach that pinnacle. And I think it's Spence. But uh, I also see, I can see Crawford winning. I can see Crawford outboxing Spence and just staying away from him. Oh, Muhammad Ali float like, don't let this man get comfortable. But Spence is going to be right in your face. And the reason why I got Spence beating Crawford is because of the body shots. Strictly body shots. I don't give a fuck about anything else. The body shots is why the in the inside game. I think with both fighters, both fighters' defenses are about equal. 
they're not super exceeding, right? But they're damn sure not below average. Spence showed me last night, even after the accident, look better than ever. Look better than ever. And hopefully we can get this fight while these guys are still young. Because they're falling on the other side of the 30. And when that happens, it, it just goes down from there. You all know that. Nobody defeats Father Time except for Mayweather. But the fact that neither of these guys are Mayweather, they might as well lock up lock horns now, you know? And we can really find out who the best is. And once we declare who the best is, it's just, it feels like a holiday in boxing, don't it? It feels like I'm going to take the day off tomorrow, motherfucker. Because <laughs> of what happened on Saturday, motherfucker. I'm taking off Monday because of what I went through on Saturday. Don't you understand what happened in boxing? You got to love this sport. I know y'all do. That's why I, I know. I love it too, man. That's why I'm out here with y'all. I love this sport. I'll be back with another one. Just want to get my post-fight talk. Spence, Ugas. Man, it was a classic. Definitely worth watching again. Love seeing that eye close even more. You know? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had it any other way. You know? <laughs> It's no disrespect to Ugas. You saw Jamal Charlo. Um, Jamal Charlo at the end of the fight gave Ugas, dapped him up, gave him a hug and all that shit. Like, yo, straight respect. I know you got in there. You got your eyes closed. Your eye is still closed now because they showed a video of um of him in the in the in the ER. His wife is with him. His eyes still fucking closed. They ain't open that shit back up yet. Like, yeah. Bruh, it's a good thing they stopped that shit. It could have been permanently closed from the way your boy Spence was treating you. You know what I mean? Spence also said, I really don't care who's at 154. You saw Jamel get a little a little offensive. I saw that. I saw that. I saw Jamel get a little bit offensive when he asked him, what if Spence moves up to your division? Hey, man, whatever Spence want to do. <laughs> I lost a little respect for Jamel. I told you, I think the money was get, is getting to his head a little bit. And uh, But the one thing about Jamal, he always comes back better. That is true. He has always prevailed at a better stance every single time. You know? He does bad in this fight that he did with um, Castano. And then he'll come back and fucking dominate like they weren't on the same level in the first place. So that's what I'm hoping happens, right? But as you can see what, what Spence said, he said... I, if I have to come up to that division and clear it out, I'm going to come up to that division and clear it out. That means you too, Jamel. Because <laughs> now, let's let's think. This is hard. There'll be some rumblings in the city, weren't there? Because we're coming down on it. Imagine Spence winning all the belts and then saying, all right, I'm done at this division like I said I was going to do. I'm going up to 154, right? And your man Jamel, hopefully he wins them all. Is he going to just vacate, go up to 160, which might be the best. But he might fight better at 154, right? But he might do it to get out the way of Spence. But it just says Spence is coming regardless on what you're doing. And if you're in the way, they might catapult me right away to mandatory to one of them belts. And then it's Spence versus Jamal Charlo. People were asking me about Jamal versus Crawford or Jamal versus Crawford. And that's another video for another day. We gonna we gonna do that one later. D block man, D blocks boxing. Leave it in the comments. Who you think's more likely to get to fifty and zero out of Spence and Crawford? Why do you have Spence winning? Why do you have Crawford winning? Okay, um, I can see it both ways, but as far as who's actually who, I think is more of a success rate. I am. I will have to pick Spence. I can't ignore my favorite punch in boxing that's so effective, which is the jab. And I can't ignore Spence's favorite punch in boxing, which is the body shot, right? I'm working the head. He's working the body, right? Both of them is what you need to cancel out your opponent. You can do it either way. Beat on the head too much, beat on the body too much. 
There's no reason why I can't act like Spence's body shots can't count. They got him this far, right? Don't be surprised if Spence takes it one more step. <laughs> yes, I will be betting on that fight like a motherfucker. Um, I've seen Crawford get hit, and that's another reason why I'm picking Spence. I saw I was at the Crawford versus Diaz fight, and um, Diaz hit him with a body shot. Crawford was laughing. Diaz didn't go back to the body, and Crawford did not stay on the inside and keep and box it out. He doesn't really box on the inside. You don't really get Crawford fighting on the inside, but you will when Spence arrives. Spence will make sure. That you fight on the inside, right? Man, I love this sport. I hope y'all do too, man. That's why y'all are here. D-Block. And I'm out this bitch.